If you haven't already, check out our full review on the Charger Hellcat. It's an absolute beast. But no car is perfect, so here are some of the things we hate about the Charger Hellcat. First up, these are some of the least ergonomic paddles ever to be fitted on a car. They're this tall. The bottom of the paddles are actually replaced with buttons to control the infotainment screen. You've got volume and some controls for your presets on your radio. The top are these flimsy paddles that bend and make strange noises when you press them. It's a bummer because the eight-speed automatic transmission, that's the only transmission available on the Charger Hellcat, is brilliant, shifts in 160 milliseconds. But fitted into these flimsy, cheap paddles really takes away from the driving experience. While the seats in the Hellcat look brilliant, they are terrible. If you don't weigh 200 pounds, you're going to be too thin for the bolsters to give you any support in the turns. And the seat is way too hard. I've been sitting in this car for about an hour and I'm already incredibly sore. This is not a supercar, it's something that you should be able to drive every single day. So having very uncomfortable seats really isn't acceptable. And in a car that already handles like a whale, you might as well give some bolster support so you're not sloshing back and forth. Which leads me to my next point. The car weighs 4,600 pounds. Sure, it remedies that in a straight line by having 707 horsepower, but taking this Hellcat around turns is like driving a bus on a go-kart track. It's too big. It handles like a whale. The steering wheel is very thick. You feel high off the ground. By no means is this a sports car. Now, it's not really trying to be, but if you're looking for something that's both fun in a straight line and fun around the track, like a BMW M5, this isn't the car for you. Interior-wise, the front dash looks practically identical to a Charger that costs $30,000 less than the Hellcat. The majority of the dash is very, very hard rubber. The buttons are cheap plastic, and they don't feel that great to the touch compared to other cars in this price range for 70 grand. The interior in this car is light years behind. However, those cars also don't have 707 horsepower. Lastly, the blind spots. This is already a big car, so changing lanes and maneuvering about is difficult. The front and rear visibility is fine. However, looking over your right or left shoulder, you're hit with a wall of blindness. You cannot see anything over here, and especially looking over your left shoulder, you can't see what's to the left and behind of you. That makes changing lanes scary. So if you're on the highway, especially if someone knows what a Hellcat is, they're going to be driving up next to you, taking photos, which does happen, especially in a brighter color like red that this one is. It makes changing lanes dangerous. So the only solution, put the blinker on, mash the throttle, full throttle, get ahead of everyone, change lanes, problem solved. And you got your 15.4 inch front Brembo's to slow you down. Well, there's some downsides of the Hellcat. Overall, like I said, it's a beast. It's a brilliant car, but it does have some shortcomings that I thought you guys should know about. Thanks for watching this review. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. We got a new Twitter, so follow us there, vehicle underscore virgins. Special thanks to the owner of this Hellcat for letting us review his car. He's got an Instagram, sinister underscore Hellcat, link in the description. Follow that for some brilliant pictures of this car. Also, starting a YouTube channel, Sinister Life. Check that out. Look forward to seeing you next video.